This is an exclusive story about tens of thousands of investors from all over the world who are having their money stolen as we speak in a huge Ponzi scheme by a Cypriot broker called INFX. We have exclusive testimony from sources inside INFX who've worked in the most sensitive departments who've decided to blow the whistle. Their testimony will reveal staggering managerial incompetence, political cronyism, corruption and eventually the wholesale theft of investors' funds to plug the gaping holes in the company's balance sheets. I worked for BBC News and Documentaries for 18 years. I've been running a film company ever since. Now, a few years ago, I invested about £500 in INFX. I turned it into £3,500. But when I came to try and take the money out last year, they basically stuck their fingers up. My account manager put every obstacle in the way and then said I was never going to get it back because the company, as he said, had serious liquidity issues. So I started this Boycott INFX Facebook page. And in fact, I was inundated with victims of INFX from all over the world, all having had small and very large sums of money stolen by the company. There are now groups all over Europe trying to get INFX to pay up. This film is the INFX story. Es ist dem Fall gelungen, die Front in breiter Formation zu durchbrechen. Im Süden hat der Gegner Zossen genommen und stößt auf Starnsdorf vor. Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und Pankow. INFX has pioneered an industry change and is now the global leader in online trading. This is the man who runs INFX. Him on the left. Marcos Cashuris, with the open neck shirt and medallion. On his watch, the company has gone from financial darling to basket case. The company should now be on the rocks, but they've got heavyweight political friends, like this bloke in the middle, the president of Cyprus himself, Nikos Anastasiades. In fact, Mr. Anastasiades went so far as to inaugurate the new INFX Global Headquarters in 2013, no doubt beguiled by the promises of riches for Cyprus from Mr. Cassiorus, or you could call him Medallion Man. INFX is based in Cyprus for a very good reason. Cyprus, if you didn't know it, is an island in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's good for tourists and for British military bases. It's divided into two, into a Greek and a Turkish half. The Turkish president says he's an admirer of Hitler. The Greek half is, well, Greek. And we all know Greece is probably the most corrupt nation in Europe. Even the anti-corruption bodies are corrupt. And Cyprus is, well, Greek. And it's got a huge financial industry. Low taxes, a skilled workforce, a comedy regulator. Beaches, sun, sea and sand. This is a list of just some of the brokers who've set up in Cyprus. Yet Cyprus says it obeys the same rules as the EU's financial institutions, signing up to their charters and laws. And if you believe that that's going to make any difference, well, you'll believe anything. So what's happened to INFX and why are they stealing all their clients' money? According to our sources from within INFX, this is what has happened. There are two key aspects of the INFX operation that frankly beggar belief. INFX is a trading house. It's operating in a highly volatile currency and commodity market. But it never had a risk management office. And it cannot be overstated how unbelievable that is in such volatile, dangerous markets where prices can change and millions of pounds can change hands in a split second. And that is why you need risk management. INFX has used huge bonuses to lure new clients, in effect doubling their account size and offering payments of up to $1,000 to anyone who brought in a new client. But there was no one keeping track of this, according to our sources, and the impact it had on their balance sheet 
was catastrophic. It's not illegal, it's just staggeringly incompetent, but it's led to criminality on a global scale. And yet it gets worse. INFX advertises it segregates clients' funds. That's standard practice for brokers, so the company is prevented from using client funds for its own purposes, and the client's money is always protected. It even advertises this on its website. But according to our sources, it's a lie. It's all designed to make potential clients feel their money is safe with INFX, but nothing could be further from the truth. Our sources have revealed that not only were clients' funds not segregated, they were all put into one huge pot from which the management paid and still pays itself large bonuses and even used the money to sponsor Barcelona FC, a football club with a squeaky clean reputation, signing up with what we now know is essentially a global scam run by Mr Cassioris. It's a clear breach of Cypriot market law. The Cyprus Investment Services and Activities and Regulated Markets Law states that when holding financial instruments belonging to clients, to make adequate arrangements so as to safeguard clients' ownership rights and to prevent the use of a client's instruments on own account except with the client's express consent. And it goes on to say, when holding funds belonging to clients, make adequate arrangements to safeguard the client's rights and except in the case of credit institutions, prevent the use of client funds for its own accounts. These laws have been broken wholeheartedly by IronFX. Hundreds of investors complained to SISEC. SISEC said they'd have a look, and in November last year, they said that IronFX may have committed possible violations of the Investment Services and Activities and Regulated Markets Law. They fined them €335,000. And that goes straight to the government. Nothing for the investors. It's also less than many people have in their account, or had, before INFX stole their money. To many people, it looks like SISEC is there to protect the financial industry and not to protect investors. What's even worse, figures compiled by our sources who worked in the back office reveal that whilst on paper from this one huge pot of money, it seemed they were rich, flooded with money. But dig deeper, do the figures and segregate out all the risks and the bonuses and the special offers. The truth was very different. They were losing millions of euros every month. But this never showed in the accounts. INFX only ran a very basic bookkeeping type of controlling account. They had hundreds of millions of euros of clients' money, but were losing millions hand over fist and had no idea. Our sources said they informed the senior management, but were brushed off and ignored. No one wanted to face up to what was to become a financial disaster. No one wanted to shatter the illusion that INFX was one of Cyprus's biggest brokers and the darling of the country's government. In fact, INFX thought it was so successful, it tried to launch an IPO and go public. Our sources say the biggest problem they had was China, where the company now faces legal action and made television. So, what went wrong in China? Well, according to our sources, there are a number of reasons. The first of these is the lack of management control. People's identities were not checked, nor was the source of funds, which came from all sorts of places. And now this is against anti-money laundering legislation. But what it meant also was that their generous bonus scheme, plus a particular scheme where people were offered a thousand dollars inducement to bring in new clients, so the floodgates opened. INFX later discovered that there were hundreds of accounts of new people brought in by one person who was in fact the same person. These people didn't exist and they were claiming thousands of dollars of their introductory fees. Now of course INFX didn't pay and of course this is all part of the terrible mix of what happened in China. But it just goes to underline the fact that if you don't have risk management, this is the sort of thing that's going to happen. Now, what is risk management? 
Well, basically, it's like driving a Formula One car around a racetrack at full throttle without a steering wheel. INFX had no steering wheel. Our sources claim that client funds are not segregated and are being used by INFX to prop up the gaping holes in its balance sheet, are supported by the facts that INFX has for well over a year now refused to give clients their money back and have confiscated their entire accounts, effectively stealing their money. Indeed, my own account manager told me in a rare moment of candour that I would never get my money back as INFX had serious liquidity issues. Our sources claim INFX enjoy political protection at the highest level and that SISEC, the regulator, is also subject to political pressure. In the words of one source, SISEC are known within the industry as being, in their words, fucking useless. Complaints have been made to the financial ombudsman, so far to no avail. There are hundreds of investors all over the world who've lost everything to INFX, totalling millions of euros. Yet the company continues to tout for business. In Germany, Patrizia Vigiani is coordinating lawsuits and social media campaigns for victims from all over Europe, Asia and the Americas. Patrizia has been subject to constant harassment and legal threats from INFX to try and silence her, to no avail. It seems INFX does not want to have its operations exposed in public in court. In response to the claims of its victims, INFX has now acted. It's issued all its clients with emails, seizing their accounts, claiming everyone had been abusing their accounts. It states, You are hereby informed that it has been established that an abusive trading activity has occurred on certain of those accounts and you are in breach of the terms and conditions relating to one or more promotions made available to those accounts. This is the company's final response. The company reserves the right to take all actions necessary in relation to the aforementioned abusive trading activity. Well, it's inconceivable that the thousands of clients of INFX have all been abusing their accounts. Indeed, in INFX's own terms and conditions, it states they have to specify the exact instances, times and dates and actual abusive behaviour if they are to invoke this clause. Of course, they haven't done it not in any one of the hundreds of emails they've sent to their clients, explaining why they'll never get their money back. Patrizia's campaigns have been issuing formal complaints to European regulators as well, whose standards SISEC are supposed to uphold, and who have clearly failed to do so. There's been no response to date, and no investigations by any of the European regulatory authorities. On a final note, our sources tried to convey the extent of the corruption within INFX and its political friends. In 2013, Cyprus's biggest bank, the Lykee Bank, went bust. It was Cyprus's financial crash, impoverishing millions of Cypriot citizen account holders. Except one. Three days before it went bust, our sources state that INFX withdrew its account of 40 million euros from the Lykee Bank. The thing is, Marcos Cassiorus, who heads INFX, may well see himself as Cyprus's answer to the Wolf of Wall Street, but to many, he's more like the lemming of Limassol, leading his presidentially favoured company over the cliff. <laughs>